In this video, we're making a time lapse with the Adobe Photography Plan. Let's go. I hope you're all doing fantastic today. As you can see, I'm out here uh, in the bush, in nature. And uh, today I'm going to show you how uh, you can make a time lapse using the Adobe Photography Plan. So we're not going to use Premiere Pro or any video editing software. We're only going to use Lightroom and Photoshop. So I came out here to do a nice time lapse of our beautiful valley. And yeah, so I'm going to make, this is the episode one, so in this video I'm going to show you, you know, how you're going to physically go out into nature, or wherever you're shooting in the field, and actually, you know, set up the camera to take the time lapse, and then in the second episode I'll get you, you know, at the laptop, and we'll start editing and processing the, the, the time lapse. So, um, what you will need is, we're going to need a camera, DSLR, so I have mine already set up right here. You'll need a camera, a DSLR, you'll need a tripod, and you'll need an intervalometer. Now that is basically a remote that can trigger your camera and, you know, capture a photo every, you know, whatever interval you set. So mine looks a bit different than, you know, the normal one. Yes, that is a food box. Um, it's a homemade intervalometer. I used an Arduino and I'm going to make a video on that one in the future. Um, but yours will look something like the photo I'm going to put up on the screen. Make sure it's not just a remote and it's actually intervalometer. So it should have a timer inside. It shouldn't only be able to trigger your camera remotely. I have two tripods because mine uses infrared to trigger my camera, not a cable. Yours is probably going to use a cable that you plug into your camera. So make sure you get one that fits your camera and makes uh, fits your brand and everything. Um, this is mine, so make sure you know how it works and you know how you should use it because um, yeah, you're going to use it now. So what is a time lapse? A time lapse is, I'll put one on the screen also right now. A uh, time lapse is basically just a video that, you know, usually a scenery and that, you know, that plays very fast so it's those videos that you see where the clouds are moving very quickly the cars are moving very quickly maybe the boats on a on a river or something you know it's a video that's played very fast now yeah many people take just roll video on their dslr or camera or anything roll video and then just in post processing speed it up but come on we're we're better than that um we're going to use photos and there's a lot of reasons why you want to do so. Um, the first one is RAW. You get RAW capability when shooting images. I mean, I have a DSLR, kind of, you know, beginner level. Where is it now? There it is. It's a beginner level DSLR, but it shoots RAW. It only shoots 1080p video, far from RAW. It's very compressed and everything, but it shoots RAW images. So we're gaining a lot of image quality by shooting images you get uh, you gain resolution because we can shoot at very high resolution images but many cameras record at a, a lot lower resolution video so that's also a reason better quality with raw and better resolution with the images and then also uh, many cameras has a recording like this one i think only records up to 20 minutes so you can't capture anything longer than 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, you know, usually you'll shoot longer than 20 minutes because in 20 minutes, a lot of the times, not a lot happens. So we want to shoot a longer, capture a longer period than that. And then also you won't, won't be able to use video, as I said. Okay, and then also there is, uh, you know, if I capture the time lapse, I can extract some images from that. 
so if I wanted to use a single frame and you know use that as an image I can do so because it is an image and not a video that's low resolution and basically uneditable because it's you know very compressed so those are all the reasons that we want to use photos and not video so let's get to our camera settings now first of all make sure your camera is set on tripod this strap if you have a strap put that on the tripod so that it doesn't swing around in the wind because that can you know introduce some camera shake in the video um, put uh, switch your camera on also make sure your camera is set to um, manual so yeah this one is something you might you might have to you know play with a bit my camera I found with experience and just you know testing it out that the um, automatic exposure modes actually do fine but in some cameras those um, automatic modes also work in steps so as your camera see it gets darker or brighter it adjusts the exposure in steps and when you're doing a time lapse that will create like flickering so it'll go like doop 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 in brightness and not smooth so you don't want that so make sure uh, just play it safe if this is your first time lapse just do manual if you're doing sunset you know start your exposure right and then unfortunately this is just how it's going to work the images is going to get d uh, darker and yeah that's just you know how we're going to do it because you can't you can do it in a lot better way but that way is expensive because we you, then you use expensive software like a lot time lapse or something like that that you know can ought that can smooth out your exposure and you can you know um keyframe different edits along the way so if you're shooting from day to night you can do different editing the night images than with the day but we really can't do that so make sure you're shooting manual and if you're shooting a sunrise you have to try to think that what is going to be your max exposure when the sun is actually up and it's the end of your time lapse because you want to expose for that remember protect your highlights and rather that the shadows you know fall because shadows you can almost in any scenario recover especially with raw but highlights clips easily so always expose for the highlights and the brightest part of your time lapse so in this case i'm quite in the middle of the day um i'll just expose for those clouds the sun might come over a bit and i just made sure i have a little bit um exposure on the top left for if the sun comes over and it gets a little bit brighter on that side but i'll expose for my scene right now and then also make sure you're shooting raw because we, we gain a lot of uh, capability with editing uh, make sure if you want your white balance can be locked but we can do that in lightroom later so that's not a must um iso 100 okay and then finally also you should make you should set your lens to its widest aperture and that can also result in flickering because your aperture opens all the way for your viewfinder and then when you actually take the image and your aperture is set to a, a smaller aperture than the lens's widest aperture your camera closes the aperture very quickly to take the image and then opens it back up again so yeah that is inconsistent and your lens doesn't close the exact same amount uh, amount every photo and that makes your time lapse flicker so make sure if you're using a lens with a variable aperture no any lens can you can change the aperture Cl make the lens make it to the lowest f number so the lens is wide open so it doesn't close for every image and then that means it stays open at a constant aperture and you won't get flickering so make sure your lens is open to its widest and then um, ISO 100 or whatever is necessary for your scene that really doesn't matter that much um, and then um, uh, okay so make sure you set up your camera on a tripod you know plug in your intervalometer set everything up and now um, we have to calculate the interval now the interval is quite tricky um, and I'll put I'll put a slice of video in here 
that I'll explain you know how you can set the interval okay so here I have my formula well if you want to get complicated my formula to you know cap to um, calculate your interval um, for your your time lapse now you take your time in minutes that you want your capture to uh, your cap you know that you want to capture so say you're doing a sunset that will maybe last in half an hour if you want to capture like today that's just in the middle of the day with clouds that very high that's not very mo moving very fast um, we'll maybe want to capture an hour and a half so you take that time in minutes and multiply it by 60 to get it into seconds so basically how long in seconds you your time lapse would last so let's take let's take an hour 60 times 60 i don't know what that would be i think it's like 3600 or something like that yeah it is and divide that by your final video length in seconds so say i want a 15 second video and i multiply that side by my frame rate so my final video frame rate so say you want your final you know video file to be 24 frames a second so what you're going to do is you take 3600 divided by um let's say 15 seconds times 24 so 15 times 24 i'm not sure what that would be in seconds uh, that number so you take 3600 divided by that number and that will give you say five seconds or six seconds or whatever um, that you should set your intervalometer to now also you can't the the final video length is also the amount of images your camera should take so also take in consideration your camera battery life so i know my camera only lasts about i don't know 500 images so that is about 17 or 20 seconds i'm not sure now so if you know your camera has a quite limited battery life um, and you know you know if your camera shoots about 500 images on a battery you know you will get a 20 second uh, 20 second about time lapse if your camera if you have a professional dslr with massive battery your camera might shoot 1500 images uh, on a battery so that'll be like 50 seconds so if your camera's battery is your limiting factor then use the camera battery life as that number so your camera battery life in images so if 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 um i know my camera if i want to use my whole battery and i know my camera shoots about 500 images i'll just use 500 for that number but if your camera's battery life is not its limiting factor just use that video length in seconds times the frame rate and just the same on this side so time in minutes times 60 so your total length capturing in seconds divided by your camera battery life in images so there is two ways that you can calculate you know how long the interval of your uh, time map should be so yeah let's get to capturing now i have uh, we have calculated our interval um, i'm going to use six seconds for mine um, now my remote works very differently than yours probably yours you will just go into this you know setup set your interval to six seconds um and i don't know but i think yeah make sure it's not controlling your shutter speed as well oh and by the way if you want to you know create a very realistic or real looking time lapse um the ideal would be that your shutter speed is half your interval so if you have a six second interval make sure your shutter speed is three seconds long now in the daytime that'll probably mean you're going to use um, ND filters because you can't close your lens that much anyway and if you could as I said you shouldn't close your lens at all so because uh, that will result in some flickering so yeah make sure your uh, in yeah make sure your intervalometer doesn't control your shutter speed 
um, but if you want to create some motion blur that is very realistic um, select uh, make your shutter speed half your interval anyway I'm going to use a six second interval because I want my time lapse to cover 1.5 hours an hour and a half in real life and I want to put that into a 15 second time lapse going to switch on my intervalometer now then I'm going to switch it to time lapse mode now it's sending out images so I put I switch my camera off and I'm going to hold in my button for six seconds one two five six okay now I'm going to leave it um, it's not you know that you sh it's not you don't have to be that precise it's just you know general I want my time lapse to cover an hour and a half if it covers an hour and 32 minutes that's fine I, it's really not that big of a deal my, uh, my remote is sending out images now make sure your lens is set to manual focus and I'm going to switch my cam camera on now select the release mode so that it uses um, the remote and yeah there, there it goes the first shot just fired um, I say second just going to quickly take a look okay looks fine don't interrupt it now it's running so leave it I'm not going to go far away because this is there could be people around here that I don't want them to steal my camera which is very likely so I'm going to stick around here just wait for an hour and a half and wait till my time lapse is finished um, so yeah um, oops I just my camera is facing that way as you can see um, that that hello there and this one no this one is in the image and I just walked into my own frame and got myself into an image so don't do that if you're shooting a time-lapse just don't walk in front of the camera but there's my bike and yeah I forgot that my camera is actually shooting a time-lapse so now I have to walk around there to get back to my bike oh and one of these guys look at all that there's one oh. just jumped up and got stuck in the fold of my leg right there and that's not a joke it's actually very 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 sore um, because it like sucks into your skin it has a very sharp thorns and then it sucks into your skin you'll get a bunch of files and I'll see you in the next video when we put those files into Photoshop into Lightroom and Photoshop and create a video from it so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video have fun shooting <laughs>